Hey, what's going on my friends? Patrick here back today with another video. Today I wanna to show you how to get that lo-fi guitar sound. I'm gonna break down my signal chain, plugins, effects that I like to use to get a nice lo-fi guitar sound. I'm gonna be breaking this down in Logic Pro, but the plugins, effects, etc., will work with whatever DAW that you're using. This is a great way to add some character and dimension and some vintage vibes into your guitar tracks. And this guitar sound suits a variety of genres, not just lo-fi. So let's first start by talking about the guitar. When I'm going for that lo-fi sound, I like to grab the warmest sounding guitar that I have. Here I've got this mini DC from D'Angelico. Semi-hollow guitars obviously offer a little more warmth than something like a Fender Strat, solid body, obviously. Also, this guitar has humbucker pickups, which are obviously just a little warmer than single coil pickups, for example. I also like to play on the neck pickup or in the middle position, just again, for a more warm tone. My tone knobs are pretty rolled back. It's probably about a, a four out of 10, five out of 10 maybe. Just a few guitar related things to consider. Most of what we're gonna be doing is in the box, but it's always good to have a solid tone coming right out of the guitar. As far as amp is concerned, I would say go with whatever you like. Obviously, if you've got a nice warm sounding tube amp, that always helps. But if you're recording DI or you've got a line out on your amp, it's all good. Like I said, most of what we're gonna be doing is in the box here. So let's jump into Logic and see what we got going on. All right, so when you open up your Logic session, obviously you wanna go up here and select a new audio track. And you're just gonna to wanna to start by loading up any plugins to get kind of your bass guitar sound. For me, I like to start with Logic's Amp Designer plugin. The old standby, you know, there's a lot of great third-party stuff out there, but sometimes the stock stuff works really well too. So more often than not, I use this large black panel amp, just your typical Fender Blackface amp. And then for the cab, I like this black panel 4x10, kind of gives this combo a Fender Super Reverb vibe, which I really like, but play around with the cabs. And then after my amp, I like to just throw on a little compressor. Nothing too crazy here. Three to one ratio, you can see we're really not even getting five dB of gain reduction here. So it's a very light compressor, but let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about some plugins that will really help you get that lo-fi sound. The first plugin I wanna share with you is the Isotope Vinyl plugin. This is a big hit in the producer community because it's a free download, which is really cool. Now this plugin is meant to emulate old vinyl record players. It's great on individual tracks. It's great on a mix bus. You can really do a lot with this plugin that is offered for free. Isotope Vinyl has been a long time fan favorite in the beat maker and producer community. And this simple and clean UI update makes this plugin super straightforward and really easy to use. Up here, you've got all of these different decades and this sets the filter response to emulate record players from that decade. So. You have all of these different effects that you can start to add in, different types of noise, dust and scratches on the record. This warp slider over here is really cool. This is what's gonna give you those pitch variations that you would get from old worn out records. This is a good way to get that kind of lo-fi modulation sound. <laughs> cool stuff. Isotope Vinyl, great free lo-fi plugin option. But if you want to take things a step further, I got another plugin to show you. I think you know where we're headed, but let's check out RC20. RC20 is a plugin that I really like for its simplicity and its variety. As you can see, you've got these six different effects modules. You can do a lot with this plugin. And there's a really good reason why this is such a widely used, widely adored plugin in the beat maker and producer community. I have a full video review and breakdown of RC20 where I go really in depth, talk about everything that this plugin can do. So I'll be sure to link that video up if you wanna check that out. But for the purpose of today's video, I'm just gonna show you how I like to use this on lo-fi guitar. 
And our first stop is the wobble module. Now, the wobble module is what's gonna give you those pitch inconsistencies that you would get from the playback on old vintage gear, like record players and tape machines. And up here you have your wow and flutter and you can slide between these two effects. The wow is a slower wobble, the flutter is a faster wobble and you slide between to determine how much of each effect you want in your mix. <laughs> Down here, you can adjust the corresponding rates. This stereo feature is really nice as well. You can dime this to get a nice wide guitar sound, or you can put the mix knob closer to 50 to get a nice chorus effect. The other thing I like to add in is distortion, super straightforward. This is just a nice tube sound. Now, if we go over here to the magnetic module, this module is meant to recreate wear and tear and volume dips that came from recording on tape or playback on old tape machines. <laughs> Cool stuff. I don't really go too crazy with the dropouts or anything like that, but I like to uh, still have this on there a little bit. I also like to use this EQ feature and just cut out some highs and lows to really kind of give myself that lo-fi vibe. <laughs> Play around with these, find what works for your track. As far as these other three modules, add these in per your taste. I do like the space module, I just prefer other reverb plugins, so I usually leave that off. The digital module is kind of interesting. If I want that bit crusher effect, I'll definitely throw this on there, but more often than not, I leave the digital module off. And as for the noise module, I really like this module. I really like both of these vinyl sounds, and I also really like the VHS sound. However, if I'm using one of those three specific noise types, I usually just throw it on the mix bus. It's a little bit more applicable to the entire track rather than just an individual track, but play around with these. There's some really cool stuff in here. And if you want a more in-depth look at RC20, definitely visit the video that I linked up for you. I also really like a couple of these Good Hertz plugins, specifically the Wolf Compressor, which was created in collaboration with Wolfpack. And I also like this Good Hertz Wow Control plugin as well. The Wolf Compressor is pretty cool as an all-in-one plugin. Obviously, it is a fully functional and capable compressor, but it also has some wow and flutter and some lo-fi controls that you can play with. <laughs> A really simple UI, very straightforward controls, but I love the all-in-one aspect of this and the concept of taking a compressor, adding in a wow and flutter feature, some of those lo-fi effects, really, really cool plugin. The Good Hertz Wow Control plugin gives you some vintage tape machine options, really cool stuff. <laughs> They've got a ton of really great presets too. They've kind of got every use case covered. So two really interesting plugins from Good Hertz that will help you get that lo-fi sound in a couple of different ways. Some quick honorable mentions for you. And I bring these up because maybe by chance you've bought one of the Waves plugin bundles, and maybe one of these plugins was included in the bundle you have, so maybe you have it. Also, Waves tends to run some ridiculous plugin sales. At the time of shooting this video, you can get this J37 $300 plugin from Waves for $29.99. So if a sale isn't going on at the time that you're watching this video and you wanna get one of these plugins, I would say definitely wait around for a sale. But this J37 tape saturation plugin is one of my favorites. It's modeled after a tape machine at Abbey Road Studios, which is really cool. I almost 
always use this on my mix bus. And this was the plugin that I used to get kind of a lo-fi sound out of my guitars and keys before I purchased RC20. So let's check it out. Up here, you'll find they've got a ton of factory presets, but what you really wanna pay attention to is the wow and flutter controls down here. So that's definitely a cool one to check out. There's also this Abbey Road vinyl plugin, which I think is pretty cool. And this one might even be a little bit better than the J37. This is kind of like the Isotope vinyl plugin, just a little bit more robust. One last Waves plugin that I want to bring up for you is the Kramer Tape plugin. I personally don't have this plugin just because it's pretty similar to the J37 Tape Saturation plugin, but again, it may be a plugin that you want to check out. It does a lot of the same stuff as the plugins that we looked at today, but just another option to consider. Now, lastly, I just want to touch on some effects that you can use to take this lo-fi sound even further. Of course, reverb. Always a good starting off point. It'll help you add some space and dimension to your guitar sound. And then, in my opinion, any modulation effect is gonna be worth experimenting with. So chorus, phaser, flanger, tremolo, vibrato, all can be really cool additions to your lo-fi guitar sound. Personally, my go-to is this Juno chorus from Archuria. It's just a great analog chorus modeled, of course, after the Juno chorus. But play around with some different modulation effects, find one that you really like. And of course, delay is always a standard effect that sounds great on guitar tracks of all varieties. And then of course, you can add in things like EQ if you wanna shape the tone of your guitar sound a little bit. But let me give you one last quick listen to the completed guitar sound. my friends that is going to wrap up today's video please do leave a like and a comment down below it really does make a big difference let me know if you want to see more production tutorials like this on the channel but listen my friends until next time my name is patrick i'll catch you real soon all right peace